CLS Talks. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Real information. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Welcome back, folks, to the CLS Talks. Uh, we reverse the roles today. I'm in the driving seat for once. I have across from me Lionel, Lionel Coveney. And Lionel has some issues or had some issues in the recent past that I thought, well, we should really air them on the radio because they're issues that are pertinent to probably 99% of the people out there on the island. So, Lionel, um, as a brief intro, you give me an intro to your case and how it came about and ultimately we'll go through it and then we'll discuss what happened in the end. Okay, well, we're backtracking about two years. Summer 2013. That far? That far. And I was uh, minding my own business, travelling along uh, somewhere in Dublin, heading home after a long day's work. And I remember it was a really sunny day at the window down. I was stuck in traffic in a particular traffic hotspot. Stopped. Um, so I suppose well, technically I wasn't even travelling. Anyway... Member of Vanguard, Shia Kona approached my vehicle. Now, I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of cars and yeah. trucks and lorries and the whole lot. I was approached and he asked me to wind down the window, which was already down. His words were, can you wind down the window? Okay. <laughs> Grand, the window is down. So I uh, had a little chat. The long and the short of it is, he alleged that I had no tax on my car and alleged that I'd been speaking on a mobile phone at the same time while driving. Why? They're, they're, they're very serious alle- allegations. Serious allegations. I mean, I was, yeah. I was extremely fearful. and They're, they're criminal allegations, I think, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They are criminal allegations. Fast forward, anyway, a number of months. I think it was December of the same year. It was June originally and up to December. December 2013. 2013. Okay. And a knock on the door one particular Sunday. Okay. I was jumping out of the shower. My loving father happened to be in the house and he accepted on my behalf a summons from the guardy to appear in court. And were the guards at your door? The guard the guards were at the door. Yeah. I was still in the shower and he took the summons from the guardy. Okay, did he have to sign anything or didn't sign anything. He also stated that he wasn't me, but that he was my dad and that I was indisposed at the time. And they said, look, will you take that? And he said, yeah, I'll take that. I'll make sure he gets it. Okay, well, that's and one issue, obviously, that he was given that information or that summons mm, and well, you weren't. As far as I was concerned, technically, I wasn't served. That would have been legally, technically correct yeah. at that point. So I thought about this and I was quite annoyed um, because I, I had more or less forgotten about the incident in Dublin with the guard on the side of the road. And I hadn't admitted to anything obviously this is just an allegation at this point and all of a sudden I have to deal with the summons for court can I backtrack there a little bit Mm. Lionel when the guard rolled up to your window and you rolled down the window even more Mm. did he state that he had seen you on the phone and did he state that you factually had no tax on on the vehicle no he came up and he said do you know why I've stopped you and I said well I was already stopped but no and he said, well, you were speaking on the mobile phone. You were, somebody saw you. On the, I said, who saw me? And he said, well, we saw you. And I said, who? The guards. And I said, did you see me? And he said, it doesn't matter. You were spotted on the mobile phone. So he didn't answer your question? He, no, no, not at all. He didn't answer any of my questions in the right, conversation. So he made these two. He made this allegation first about you being on a mobile phone. Yeah. First of all, he said, somebody seen you. Mm-hmm. Then he said, we seen you. Yeah. And then he said, it doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter but that I was seen. Basically, you got to accept what I say. And okay. I said to him, look, I don't understand what's going on here because I wasn't on the mobile phone. And I said, furthermore, would you like to have a look of, at my mobile phone, which was in its cradle at the time? It wasn't in my hand or anything. It was, it was in its cradle, plugged in, charging. I said, would you like to see because there are no calls made or received? Right, so you offered him the opportunity I, I did. to actually check your phone mm to verify his allegation. Exactly. And did he 
accept? No, he he declined that and he, he actually said, well, you could have deleted those when you saw me coming across because I was in the right-hand lane, three lanes of traffic. I was in the right-hand lane. He had been in on the left, so he had to cross two lanes of traffic to get to me. So, so that's a further allegation on his part that he is alleging that you may have deleted something that didn't happen. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you can okay. see how ridiculous this is. Now, where did the tax issue come in? Because did he mention the tax to you at the time? Uh, afterwards, um, after he had dealt with and made a couple of notes, whatever they were, I asked to see his notes, incidentally, his contemporaneous okay. notes. Uh, well, I just for, for the listeners, what you said contemporaneous mm. notes. Could you expand on what that means? They're his, his little back notebook, for all intents and purposes, um, that they are, the Guardia are obliged to make their notes that they can rely upon, or whatever notes, they, they have to make them in this official book. And contemporaneous notes are the names there, the notes of now, the minutes of whatever case, if you like, in inverted commas, is going on on the side of the road. Okay. Um, so I asked to see them and he said, well, no, why would you want to see them? And I said, because I'd like to sign them and I'd like to attest you, them. You'd like to sign them? Yes. And the reason... Why would you like to sign his notes, surely? Well, the reason, Des, is because I'm not very trusting of anybody that I don't know necessarily that's my disposition well, surely you trust a guard like. well I absolutely yeah. do not trust a guard especially one who's accusing me of speaking on the mobile phone when I wasn't <laughs> okay. so he doesn't have a good track record at this point yes so the reason I wanted to sign it was so I could make a mark and put a time and a date on it so that anything underneath that mark I'd basically put a box around what he had written and I'd sign it then so anything outside the box would then be after the fact right so you're putting a line under that issue and then it, he should not be able to add any further information to that at a later date. Exactly. So and that was the end of that. Exactly. Yeah. And he didn't let me and he said I had no right to have a garden notebook and this, that and the other. So he wasn't given... Well, you were asking... You, you didn't ask him to give it to you to keep it or anything. You were just no. asking to see it. I asked to see it and then when he asked why would I, I said I'd like to sign it as well. But I didn't ask to hold on to it or to... Okay. keep it or anything yeah. like that you weren't going to drive off with it or anything no, no absolutely no I couldn't drive there was too much traffic <laughs> so um, he then went around to the tax he didn't actually say on the side of the road your tax is out or anything like that okay. he asked me was everything in order and I said as far as I'm concerned everything is grand there yeah is there a problem and he said the weather's well, great <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly great day uh, he, he also asked me on my windscreen I have a little uh, no contract notice basically which uh, precludes anybody who may think that they may have a contract with me from attaching anything to the vehicle it's just a little small notice okay. he was more interested in that than he was oh, tax this is, this is the thing whereby if a, a clamper or something comes along they want to give you property attach your, to your property you, you are allowed to keep that property because it comes to your property exactly yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so he was quite interested in that I explained what it was and he kind of said grand well, at least he, he was interested well he was he was yeah. interested yeah, um, yeah. He, he did ask was it directed at him and I said well unless you want to affix anything to the vehicle <laughs> it's not no I mean it's it's just there it is what it is yeah um, so that was fine and he said okay can you nominate a guard station to show your tax and insurance that's interesting it is interesting and at this point in time I said yes now i if this was now, I would actually say, no, I'm not in a position to do so. And he would probably ask why. And I'd say, because I don't know where I'm going to be. Because within 10 days, I do a lot of traveling with work. I'm always around the place. I don't know where I'm going to be from one minute to the next. Mm. Now, at the time, I did say, yeah, OK. So I nominated my home Garda station. And I did go down with my tax and insurance to the Garda station okay. within, within 10 days. And Well, just, just to sort of expand on that point for the listeners... Mm. Um, you said he asked you to not. He asked you to nominate yeah. a guard the station of your choice. Mm. Now, what do you think he was inferring with that or saying with that? What, what, how did you read that? In my head, I thought, okay, well, that's a chance to clear things up because he's saying this. Um, normally, in my experience, when I've been asked to produce insurance or license or whatever else at a guard the station, it's to show that things are in order, to put on the record that things are in order, and there will be no further action taken because I can show that things are in order okay um, I didn't have my license on me at the time and I thought right well maybe that's one of the reasons because I didn't have it with me he said I should have my license I said okay well I didn't know that and then he said can you produce your various bits and pieces documentation okay. tax insurance and license so I did and a note was made of that and we fast forward then what, what I find myself intriguing now with the way he said it was he wanted you to nominate mm the guard the station mm. now 
from my little understanding of what I've read about the law, is that he ca- nobody can force you to nominate something or give information. So he could not actually nominate the guard. Could he not have nominated the guard of the station himself? As I understand now, and I didn't at the time, but as I understand now, no, he couldn't. He's precluded from nominating. I mean, there are a number of things that the guards are not meant to do, and they're not meant to give evidence. They're not meant to in any way influence a potential court case. What right would he have then to nominate for me or tell me that I should be in a particular place? I'm not guilty of any offence. Even if there is an alleged criminal offence, it's merely alleged. I'm innocent until proven guilty of any criminal offence. In other words, then, a guard is precluded from giving you an order unless he suspects the commission of or the acting out of a crime taking place. Exactly. So he could not legally order you to go to a guard the station. That's why he used the word nominate and he wished you to nominate. Yeah, and I think there'd be far more arrests if that wasn't the case because they'd simply just arrest you and drag you off to the guard station anyway. Absolutely. Correct, and yeah. th- I mean, it's for the same reason that they don't and can't do that and okay. or shouldn't do that at least. So look, let's move on a little bit because yeah. like, I mean, we've gotten a few points there which obviously you took note of and you took cognizance of. Yeah. And that, that word comes into play later on. So we move on from there on the side of the road. So he picked up the issue about the mobile phone or mm. he created an issue or an allegation and then he created an allegation in relation to tax. Mm. And I, I very much was of the opinion that because I challenged him, albeit very politely, but because I challenged him on the mobile phone, I mean, no one's going to accuse me of something. And if I feel I didn't do it, I'm not going to sit there and take it. So I politely rebutted his allegation on the side of the road. And I thought he took grave exception to that. OK, so you would, uh, my, from what you're saying to me, then your feeling was that he just said, well, I'll get something on this guy because he's actually challenged what I said to him and yeah. that's it yeah okay well that's not unusual I've heard stories like this before of course mm. and so, I've experienced yeah. that myself in the past too <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> so that, but look at the, just to summarise that then and we, we'll move off it now because I think we, we need to start getting into some more heavier stuff but basically the, the founding or the grounding charge at that point would have been an allegation that you were on the mobile phone illegally yeah, I received two summonses to my surprise. Okay. Not just the mobile phone, but also non-display of tax. So the issue there may have been the fact that there were tax disks overlapping each other. I, I don't know what way other people put their tax, dis- tax disks up, but I generally do it the lazy way and just stick slot the new, in. Slot yeah. the new one in. So um, he, he did actually, I should have said that earlier, he did mention something about, well, I can see two ta- tax disks here. And I, and oh, so he could see a tax disc. Well, he could see a tax disc. He could actually see two, yeah. Right, OK. <laughs> but you see... All right, OK, we'll get into that later. I'll, mm. I'll take a mental note of that. Mm. Um, he he did admit, then, he could see a disc or discs. Oh, yeah. And there there wasn't a huge deal made about the tax thing. There right. were just these couple of questions asked. Grant. And I answered. And as far as I was concerned, that was that issue dealt with. OK. Um, so I was very surprised to receive that summons <laughs> also. Uh, I was surprised to receive both. Uh, but received them, or at least my, through my dad, received them I did. So I thought, right, how best to deal with this? And I thought about it, and I thought long and hard, and I read, and I did all the things that I normally do when dealing with something. And I thought, right, well, I need more time to deal with this. I don't really fancy turning up in court. Okay, so um, you, you resolved that you needed more time because obviously it needs a little bit of extra study. Yeah. Now, most people, you are probably cognizant of this, most people, um, when they get something like that, they, they panic. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to pretend that I don't get the fear when a letter drops through the door that I don't like or a summons arrives or something Mm. like that. There was a certain amount of fear and I thought for me, and I can only speak for me, the best way to deal with that is to give myself more time so that I can act from a place where I've dealt with the fear, which it took me a bit of time to do. And when I'm more rational about things, well, then I'll actually decide how to deal okay. with the legal side of it. So that was December 2013, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Um, how, how soon then after that date were you to allegedly appear in court in relation to the charges? I was due to appear in May of 2014. That's not too bad. So yeah. that's January, February, March. Yeah, that's five months you had yeah. to, as a run into that. So what did you do next in preparation for going to court? Well, what I did was I actually wrote a letter in April to the guard in question I also wrote to the presiding judge um, 
addressed at the court that was listed. I didn't know who the presiding judge was. I tried to find out, could get no information whatsoever from the court services. So I wrote to the presiding judge at that address okay. and also to the district court clerk. And I was easily able to find out who, who, who that, that was. was. Yeah. So I wrote to these three individuals and I said, look, I'm not in a position basically to appear in court on that date. However, I do intend to deal with this case and I gave them a date in November that I would be disposed to deal with it. So you're telling me then that you were due in court on the May, which is five odd months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wrote to them in April. Yeah. And told them you would not be available for at least another five, six months. Exactly. Yeah. I said, look, I... can, Can you do that? Well, I did. I bet you that didn't work out too well for you. Well, on the contrary. Yeah. Uh, I received correspondence back saying from, that from who? Uh, from from the guard. Okay. After the May date, mm-hmm. saying that the case had been adjourned to a further date in November, and that I basically he'd seen so me there. So you operated on, forgive me for saying this, mm-hmm. on a presumption that because of the letter you wrote in April, the case wouldn't go ahead because you told the court that you would not be available. Yes. And then found out laterally after the May date that it had been adjourned till November? Exactly. Okay. Now, some people might say that's presumptuous of me. However, I can't very well write a letter stating that I'm indisposed mm-hmm. and turn up on the day. That'd be correct. Yeah, you that'd, know, be, so <laughs> <laughs> that'd be lying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, I want to remain in honour at all times. I'm an yeah. honourable fellow. And... Um, I, d- I did state in the letter that I would require a written confirmation that my wishes had been adhered to. Okay. So the guard that then was good enough to write the guard to was, after the date? He was very nice of him and he wrote to me and he said, look, it's been adjourned again. So Grant, so you have a bit more time now. So now you've uh, approximately 11 months to deal with the whole thing. Exactly, yeah. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, it was great. Um, so I thought about it and thought about it a bit more and I thought, you know what? November is a busy month for me. I don't think I'm going to go again. November is always a busy month. It, it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, Christmas is coming and <laughs> exactly. the goose is getting fat. And then Easter's that. after that. But anyway, go on. <laughs> so um, I tried the same tactic again. And I okay. said, look, due to unforeseen circumstances, and they were unforeseen, I can't go again. Now, I'm still extremely anxious to resolve this. So okay. and you I require further time. them of that as well. Yeah, yeah and okay. I said that I required further time. I said I needed a year. A year? <laughs> another year? Yeah, well, I mean... What's uh, another year like? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm not a legal professional and it takes me a lot longer than it would the average legal professional yeah, to yeah, deal with this. Yeah. And there is the element of fear as well that we spoke about. So yeah. I thought a year is fair to me. And I did have every intention. I, I didn't lie in, in any of my letters. Uh, well, they weren't letters. They were notice demands. I mean, I was notifying the court okay. and the individuals involved um, that I had a demand to make. And I made the demand and they adhered then to it. It wasn't a request, it was a demand. Oh, that's great. That's Mm. a good thing for the listeners to tune into. Yeah, well, it it wasn't a question. I didn't say, look, can I have this? I said, I'm not available. Yeah. And I'm in a position to deal with it then. Uh, Laterally. Yeah. 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 But you will deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Grant, okay. So they acknowledged my, my second demand and I received correspondence then that the case was listed preemptorily against me Mm -hmm. for a date in the future and I thought right well I don't know what that means and I I genuinely didn't know what that meant I thought so they hadn't set a date is that what they were no they had they had set a date I have it somewhere here March 2015 okay so I thought right I better look up these words and I realised that preemptorily meant that I wouldn't be granted any more adjournments that the case was going to proceed whether I turned up or not on that date the case was going they've given you enough time now exactly so I thought okay I have to prepare now Mm -hmm. to head up to court because I am going to deal with this. Yeah. So what I proceeded to do was issue a a couple of other notice demands. One in February, which I addressed to the guard, to the court, to the district court clerk, and then to a number of other individuals, such as the Office of the Attorney General. And I'm laughing because a lot of people out there might think this Mm -hmm. is utterly ridiculous. What's it got to do with the Attorney General or the head of the high court and yeah. um, there were a number well, of what has like, it to do with them I mean they might, the people might be laughing but I want to know like for the listeners what okay I, well a couple of the other people were Ken Murphy head of the Law Society of Ireland that um, might be relevant yeah we'd yeah. Minister Francis Fitzgerald Minister for Justice at the time yep. um, Carmel Foley the office of the Guard Ombudsman that makes sense yeah. Kieran Fitzgerald also of the same office and Noreen O'Sullivan the Guard Commissioner that makes and, sense too yeah yeah but what it has to do with 
the head of the law society or the head of the court service is that, well, these are the judge is an officer of the court. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm being prosecuted as a criminal in the court, the DPP who's prosecuting me yeah. is a ward or an officer of the court as well. So it is in their interests. And I felt it was, in terms of protecting myself, it was in my interest to let their boss know what was going on and put everything on the record for them mm -hmm. so that if somewhere down the line I required them to become directly involved that they were cognizant of and they were informed the of facts. what was going on exactly Correct. okay so I wanted sense. to put yeah. it on the record and let these people who are essentially the bosses of those who were dealing with know what was going on here that makes sense yep yeah Perfect so sense. the first notice demand that I sent was for the record and it was a demand for information and answers and I mean, I wanted the information and answers primarily from the guard. And did you do this under a certain act or did you just do this on a broad basis whereby we just want information? Just a broad basis okay. um, on this one. And I asked questions uh, such as, I, I have them in front of me, with specific reference to the preamble of a letter that was sent to me which stated, re, summonses for offences on. I asked simply on what offences had I been convicted. Mm -hmm. because it didn't say on the correspondence from the guard that these were alleged offences. Oh, I see. They were okay. yeah. st stated offences. Oh, as if you had been as convicted. As if I had been convicted. Yeah. So I asked, well, have I been convicted? And if so, of what? Yeah. Well, you really did critically read that stuff, didn't you? Well, yeah. I did. I, I pulled it apart as best I could and I, I tried to leave no stone on term because as far yeah. as I'm concerned, I'm not a criminal and I don't want to be convicted yeah, of well, a criminal offence. If, if, if the offence is alleged they should be stated as alleged but not as an offence because you obviously have not been proven guilty of these alleged offences exactly yeah. that's exactly how I saw it yeah. I also asked that considering uh, the, one of the notice demands that I had given informing that I would be available on a particular date why had they listed the case preemptorily against me for a date just prior a couple of weeks prior to the date that I had said I would be disposed to deal with it oh, I see I right. neglected to mention that earlier yes. it was about two weeks prior this kind of upset me somewhat because I didn't think I would be. This gave me less yeah. time that I, than I had anticipated. Yeah, Some people out there might think, well, it serves you right because you're trying to string them along. Well, just to qualify, you said the word string along, but you're not. I mean, it takes a lot for people to get to grips with what is going on with these things, mm. you know. And two years, in my estimation, or a year and a half, is not an unfair an, or an unreasonable period in which, try, in which to try and understand what is going on mm. and how to properly legally and lawfully defend yourself essentially I had to give myself a crash course on the law. quite a lot of the law yeah. that I just simply didn't know up to then yeah. you know yeah. so I asked a number of questions anyway uh, none of the questions were answered I didn't, re them. I didn't receive a response from anybody okay so I sent another one just coming up to the time of the case and again for the record cc'd the same people on the letter again it was another not under any law but it, it was just a demand for information and answers and I was acknowledging the fact I had given a, a certain period of time in the last letter for the questions to be answered two weeks Fair and enough. I said mm -hmm. if you don't address or answer the demands or the requests for information it will be assumed that you're consenting and that there's no case to answer here Fair enough. Yeah. So I followed up then because I received nothing and I said right okay well it's now on the record that you have consented I asked a number of questions I was basically trying to arm myself with information to know where the prosecution was coming for coming for yeah. me so yeah. if they're looking to convict me how are they looking to convict me what points are they looking to convict me on and as far as I'm concerned I'm entitled to what know that so I can defend law. myself exactly, exactly. Yeah. and I said look well you have essentially consented to the fact now that there is no case to answer mm -hmm. no response to that as well so that's terrible oh, well I mean I was shocked and horrified by that <laughs> so <laughs> I could tell <laughs> yeah so um, I then decided right it's time to go to court so you just did all your 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 uh, previous plans mm -hmm. to go to court to facilitate them this time okay yeah i did and it was interesting because when i got to court the guard approached me well you were away were you for a period of time wow yeah and i also noticed he had my letters he had copies of my letters i had a couple of my friends in court with me uh, just to observe and to take some notes yeah. just in case i needed Witness, to refer yeah. back to them yeah and my friends also observed that uh, with a number of solicitors and other Garda colleagues, they were having a right laugh and a joke at the letters. He was showing the letters around, my letters, my private. So he was disclosing your correspondence mm -hmm. with 
third parties. Exactly. Essentially. Yeah, uh, nothing yeah. to do with publicly. the case. Publicly. Publicly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we noted that and um, I asked him, well, how, how did he know I was away? Or, yeah. Well, sure, didn't you write to me and tell me you were, you were gone off to the States? Now, mm-hmm. I had made reference in the letters to the state because at one point I was out of state. Right. At no point I said, had I said I was in the United States. So I thought, right, I mean, I don't know how well researched this guard is coming into court. Or can here. he even read for that matter? Well, well, well exactly. You know. I mean, he, if, if he can read, he had certainly read my letters wrong. Okay. So I was going into court on this day with one thing on my mind and one thing only. I needed what was that? Well, I needed information. <laughs> I wanted to know exactly what were the prosecution relying upon to convict me of this criminal offence because I had previously asked and they had not told me. Okay. So, with that in mind, I had read a very interesting book called The Gary Doyle Order, which mm-hmm. I would recommend anybody who's dealing with any kind of legal issue reads immediately, gets their hands on it. We'll give you details maybe at the end of the show on how they can do that. And I had decided what I need is a Gary Doyle order. A Gary Doyle order being... I was going to ask you, what is Gary Doyle order? Well, it's basically a disclosure order. And it's that the prosecution has to send to me or prefer to me all of the information on which they rely to convict me. What do you mean all? Everything. You mean all? Everything. (laughs) Yes. All means all. Absolutely. Everything. So they have to send you the evidence per se that was disparaging towards them if they had evidence on file of that nature well I had requested that they do because whether or not it damaged their case is not the point the point is I need everything because Mm. I mean to not send me that would be to assume that I'm guilty of something isn't it true as well if people take the time to look up the DPP guidelines for Mm -hmm. prosecutors that it does actually categorically and clearly state well it states it yeah Yeah, that's right that's even if the evidence is disparaging mm-hmm. towards the accuser's case, yeah. they still have to send they you... They still have to send yeah. it to me. Okay. Because why would I not be entitled to that? Think about it from my point of view. If I'm claiming I'm innocent of something and their so-called evidence backs up my case, how can that be excluded from yeah. the case? It they should, it, they it, should never have brought a case in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So... I went in front of the judge I was terrified I'm yeah. by no means a barrister or a, an experienced solicitor and I'm not going to lie I was very very nervous I have been in court before mm-hmm. and for some reason this time I've been in court on civil matters before this was a criminal matter and I thought I'd be well able for a Gary Doyle order request well the fear struck me in court um, okay. I was struggling mm-hmm. to hear what was going on as I waited for the case to be called as is often the case it was a packed courtroom I had tried to position myself as close to the judge as possible so that I could hear. However, I wasn't that close and separating me from the judge were loads of solicitors, barristers and Gardaí. And the Gardaí on the day basically didn't keep quiet. They were just chatting and laughing and joking among their fr- their, th- themselves and their friends and they were taking phone calls in the court. And basically nothing could be heard. I don't know how anybody hears what's going on in, in these district court hearings, but... Luckily, I did manage to hear my case being called, okay. and I noticed the guard wasn't there. The guard wasn't there. The guard when the case wasn't was there when the okay. case was called. So I stepped up, and I thought, right, well, if the guard isn't here, there's no evidence. So how can this case proceed? So I requested. Um, so the judge called the case. The judge called the case, and, and no guard stepped forward. No guard. Did the DPP, a representative for the DPP, stand up or anything well, like that? No, but the judge then asked, "Is there anybody here?" on behalf of the guard at which point another guard put up the hand and stepped forward so he said look I'm here uh, such and such is indisposed he's off dealing with some other case in some other courtroom at which point I jumped in and I said uh, okay well I'm moving to have this case struck out and there was a ripple of laughter around the courtroom at this point from the guardy and the solicitors okay uh, which I noticed. So you're kind of saying to me that they were kind of prepared in some way for you because normally that wouldn't happen when somebody moves the court to have a, a case struck out. People would just listen. They wouldn't laugh. Well, they laughed. And not only did the other guard who was over there representing, bearing in mind, the guard had been there. He was there when I walked into the court. Okay. But when the case was called, he wasn't. So he'd, he'd obviously left to go off wherever he went off. Okay. Um, so there was the, the the laughter took place and I thought right well I'm not going to be distracted by that I'm here 
yeah, with to regard deal with, the, uh, issue, to deal yeah. with the issue. So yeah. the judge asked me, and she said, well, on what grounds? And I said, well, on the grounds that the guard isn't here, so there is no evidence against me. That makes I, sense. Yeah, yes, and I'm here, to, I'm here to defend this case, but there's no evidence. So surely there's no case. Mm-hmm. She said, well, okay, there is, there is after lunch a second hearing which technically is part of the same day in the same case I didn't know whether there was or there wasn't to be quite frank um, and she said look I'm going to call this again after lunch it could be the first well, case called so she addressed the other guard and said mm-hmm. you tell yeah. such and such that he has to be here or I will grant the request well you see the, the judge technically speaking didn't deal with the motion before the court which was to have the case struck out for want of prosecution yeah which is something I now know but didn't at the time yeah well yeah. again it's it's very much you know um, it's you get it's a baptism of fire yeah. for most people and in in retrospect or in the future perhaps you'll know Oh, I certainly you know. will if this, and hopefully it won't happen again, but if something like this does happen, yeah. I mean, I will know to stand on a point. I mean, if I have moved the court or in other words, requested that the court do something, they're obliged. They have to, by law, deal with that. Correct. Yes. And they didn't. She glossed over it and she, she basically warned the guard to make sure he was there the next time or it would be granted. So I thought, OK, grand. Well, Sam, you're off to a good start, really, yeah, in well, that I context. Felt, I, yeah. I felt quite good about it. I thought, well, he might not turn up. Yeah. So anyway, after lunch, he did turn up. Oh. And yeah, I know, I was raging. And the fear struck me again. And I remember yeah. I was physically shaking. That surprised me, which led to more fear because I thought, why am I shaking? I, I mean, I know what I'm doing going in here. I have one thing and one thing only on my mind. That's to get this disclosure order, the Gary Doyle order. Yeah. So the case uh, recommenced. She called me, uh, true to her word, the judge called the case first um, because I had actually said that I was, in a, I was in a rush and I had to be somewhere else to try and get her to strike out the case earlier. She asked, how was I pleading? And I said, well... It's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I said, I'm not pleading just yet. I said, um, I need a Gary Doyle order. And she looked surprised. There was another ripple of laughter from the courtroom. Again, for the listeners, Lionel... Um, you, the judge now this happens uh, from my observations and probably from your observations it happens every day of the week where the judge says how, how are you pleading mm. now why did you say I'm not pleading well the reason I said and again I was kind of winging it on the day mm-hmm. but the re- in my head I kind of thought well if I plead the court case begins and am I obliged then to back up and show why I'm pleading in a particular way because if, if I plead without the information I mean I, I didn't feel I was in a position to plead either way without this information I was in there right. to get information so I could see their case then I'll plead yeah well uh, just to clarify again uh, clarify for me as well as uh, probably the listeners is that how can it, you possibly plead to anything when you do not know what evidence is against you how is it possible to do such a thing it's so, very interesting though, you know that's, that's, yeah and yeah. and even when I when I think back to it, I mean, it all happens so. This happens so quickly. I mean, the first mm. the first hearing that we've already discussed took maybe thirty seconds or a minute. This one that we're now discussing took maybe two. Um, and she said, "Well, why do you need a Gary Doyle order?" I, I had noticed no solicitor at any point in all the other cases that day had asked for a Gary Doyle order. No solicitor, not one. And there were dozens and dozens and dozens you're of. You're telling me you're in that court for the whole day mm. and not one solicitor in the court stood up for their clients and said can we have a Gary Doyle order not a single one I can categorically state that the reason I, I know and can remember it so well is because of the fact that I was in there for just that thing and it seemed like it was something that could help my case so much I thought surely every solicitor would be the first thing you'd ask for yeah. not a single one Okay. Um, so she asked why and I said well because I'm not in, I, I don't really understand what's going on here. I said, I, I don't know much about the law and I really need to know what I'm being accused of. So the guard jumped in at this point and he said, well, you do know you got the summons, didn't you? And I said, I don't understand the summons. And he said, well, you're here. And I said, well, there have been, been reams of correspondence since then. I tried to find out from you what exactly was going on and I did manage to figure out that I better turn up here today to deal with this matter but I still don't know really what's going on so I, I, I or need what evidence you have yes. exactly and okay. I addressed the judge again I said for that reason I, I just need to know what I'm being accused of because I have every intention of doing my best to clear my good name and I need the information to do that I can't possibly do it without and I, I used um, 
a line that I had learned from somewhere and I said I think justice needs to be seen to be done here very good and again the guard interjected there's no need for any of that and I turned to him and I said well it sounds very much like guard you're looking for a rush to judgement here and I'm sure that the honourable court would not like that again just for the listeners sake you you said you you were alleging that the guard may be rushing the matter Mm. to judgement yeah because I had picked up somewhere or read somewhere that the court isn't entitled to rush judgement I mean justice has to be seen to be done Mm -hmm. and if somebody's being rushed and they don't know what's going on well shouldn't they be allowed to take their time and the law does state that they should be allowed to take their time correct yeah so I thought okay well I'm going to use that little phrase there to help me if I need things slowed down and I did need things slowed down because it was all like a big rush too fast yeah and I thought why is this guard even talking when I'm trying to speak to the judge here that's a good question too I, I I didn't think he should be allowed to interject in the way that he was the judge, I remember, kind of smiled and grinned and said, OK, well, that's a good enough reason for me. And Fair tur- play to her. Yeah, and turned to the guard and said, well, uh, granting the, the Gary Doyle order, and you've two weeks to send all the information pertinent to this man and the case to the address that he provides. And then it was, well, is, is it the address you've been using up to now? And I said, yeah, grant. There was a date for the hearing set. Oh, yes. Of yeah, course, yeah, and there was a little bit of toing and froing on that. Uh, there was a date set and I thought right well I don't have enough time it was for, for three weeks time I think and mm-hmm. I thought no I need a few months on this yeah. so I had said that I needed um, I needed to be near the end of the year which, which was, was, was <laughs> quite Again. yeah I think I was looking for nine months or something like that Okay, yeah. and the guard objected he said look we want this tied up quickly so the judge offered another date in June and it turned out the guard was going to be on holidays then. So anyway, there was a, there was a date set for the end of May uh, that, w- that we all May agreed on. May 2014. F- 15. 15. 15. Uh, this year? Yeah, this year. Right. Okay. So the date was set and uh, the judge had asked, did that suit me? And did it suit him? And also asked the guard, how long do you think this case will take? Because okay. I had said that I wanted to be out of the court as quickly as possible because I was terrified by the place. So could it be in the morning? Mm. And she said, well, I don't see why not. How long is this case going to take? Addressing the guard. Okay. At which point, and I'll never forget it, the guard looked at me, sneered, scoffed audibly, looked at the judge and said, ah, no more than five minutes. A lot less, I'd say. And the judge then turned to me and said, well, will it take five minutes? And I said, well, I certainly hope so, but I would anticipate it'll take a little bit longer. So she said, right, it'll take no more. So you remained polite. I remained polite at all times. I didn't see see any reason to be as rude as the guy sitting opposite me. Yeah, exactly. Or the alleged guard. The the alleged guard, yeah. (laughs) Right, so this alleged offence took place in May 2013. So this is two years later, which is uh, falling in this year. Yeah. So two years on from the alleged Mm offences, and you managed to squeeze two years out of it to get the time obviously to study and research and bring up your knowledge about the law people might say oh well you're, you're kind of taking the piss a little bit there that you did know from day one what was going on going back two years I didn't yeah. when this happened I mean I really did have to research this it wasn't a case of me actually knowing what was going on as I might now if this were to happen mm-hmm. and, and deciding to take two years I genuinely didn't so a lot of it for me in the initial stages was a wing and a prayer and I hope I can get this time okay. and if the court had turned around and said no you're not getting the extension I would have dealt with it as best I could you'd then. have had to yeah, yeah I would have had way. to yeah. so yeah two years so I, I would anticipate that somebody if they really wanted to could probably get a lot longer well not that you'd necessarily not plan to do that but no. if you needed it obviously you know you'd have to try and seek it obviously exactly because yeah. it's not very nice having something like this hanging over your head for two years Definitely, either yeah. that is the other yeah. side of it so the judge granted your Gary Doyle order per se and yeah. then you're back in court then how many more weeks later? Um, May, you said May? Yeah, so I think that that was March. So Mar- March, April, I, did, I did a good two months, I think two and a half months. Okay, granted. Um, which so I did the guards then issue then the evidence they had against you? Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, within the two weeks. CLS Calls.